Assalamu alaikum all. Assalamu alaikum, sir. So, do you see my screen? The blank PowerPoint? Yes. Sir. Yes. Good. So we are going to talk about the central dogma of molecular biology today. And the central dogma of molecular biology deals with flow of genetic information. How many of you have seen the lecture uh, I uploaded two days ago? Mm, sure, like almost half, three fourths, because like we have the exam as well for bio and then the tests. So, mm. yeah, that's why. Okay, so let's start today's lecture. It's uh, one of the most interesting lecture in, in molecular biology because that makes up the core of molecular biology. So it's about flow of information from DNA to the functional molecule, which is protein. So how information in DNA is decoded in the form of messenger RNA, which is then decoded and protein is made. So essentially what we have, we have DNA as the main template which is decoded into RNA. And this decoding, this process is called transcription. And RNA is then decoded into protein and the process is called translation. Now, what we are referring to is that in DNA molecule present in our chromosomes, there is some specific information because there's flow of information from DNA to the protein. This is what we call central dogma of molecular biology. Now, in this piece of DNA on chromosome, it means there is information hidden or there is a code which needs to be decoded if we want to produce proteins. And proteins are the functional molecules in a living cell. In the human cell, we have nearly 20,000 genes, nearly 20,000 genes which are scattered on these 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now, each gene needs to be decoded through the process of transcription and translation. And then we have the gene product, which is protein. Now we have to understand what is a gene? Is it just, you know, random sequence of nucleotides or there is something specific in this apparently random order. You can, you know, write the complementary sequence on this side of this sequence. So it means we have to first understand what is a gene. How a gene look, looks like. So a gene, as we learned in the last lecture, 
is definitely a piece of DNA, a segment of DNA. But remember, it's not just a random sequence. The nucleotide sequence of the gene going from five to three, the sequence of the gene, the nucleotide sequence of the gene, it contains a specific code. And the genes, the structure of the gene, they are different in prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. This is the first thing we have to understand. Essentially, the gene in eukaryotes and prokaryotes is the same DNA sequence, you know, same nucleotide. Uh, the code is hidden in these nucleotides. And last time, I think I briefly told you, but in today's lecture, in the context of today's lecture, it's very important that we revisit the structure of the gene. So a gene has very special DNA sequence, which we refer to as promoter. And it's present in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Promoter sequences, they contain specialized, I zoom in and I go, they contain Tata box, both in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Promoter element, it provides the lending site for proteins which are responsible for decoding DNA eventually into messenger RNA in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. And these proteins are called, in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes, they are called RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase is an enzyme which can synthesize RNA molecule from DNA. Now, after the promoter element, there is coding sequence. This arrow indicates the transcription start site and the CDS, the coding sequence means it has a specific reading frame, A, U, G, C, A, G, uh, sorry, it's DNA, so A, T, G, C, A, G, etc., and it goes like this. And there is no interruption in this coding sequence when this messenger RNA will be synthesized. Let's say we have A, U, G, and then this, you know, triplet code. This will be read or decoded without any interruption as a protein eventually. So the coding sequence in the prokaryotic gene, it has no disruptions. It's a straightforward open reading frame. We call that ORF, open reading frame. However, in eukaryotes, the coding region of the gene, so if this is the plus one, this is the plus one, plus one means the point from where transcription starts, from where RNA polymerase starts synthesizing messenger RNA, okay? Where it starts decoding DNA and the first nucleotide of messenger RNA is synthesized. That nucleotide is called plus one. Anything upstream in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, that will be minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So for example, minus, 10 to minus 17 nucleotides, we find these Tata box or so. And then there is another uh, consensus sequence at minus 35 sequence as well. All these are promoter uh, sequences. Below the downstream of plus one, in case of eukaryotes, the, there is no continuous open reading frame. The coding sequence, is disrupted. So there are coding regions which we name as exons. So the nucleotides of 
DNA, which will be part of exons, it means they are encoding some amino acids. They contain the hidden message in the DNA. After exon, there will be some nucleotides, a length of DNA, which is called intron. And then again, exon, then intron, then exon. Yeah, Zainab, please ask question. Um, sir, I was confused. Ke, I do get that exon is the part which gets encoded to an, make an amino acid, right? But how do we know ke, which part will be the intron and which part will be the exon? Very good question. Excellent question. So how do we know? We know based on information we have gathered during last nearly four decades. We have isolated so many genes and we have uh, decoded messenger RNA and then eventually their protein sequence that we know that today, after these 40 years or so, we know what is intron and these, the triangles are the introns and the rectangles are exons. So today we know at nucleotide level that from where intron starts and where intron stops. We call this exon intron boundary or exon intron junction. We precisely know and using computer algorithms, we have now the, uh, the, the scripts written. If you have a DNA sequence, let's say, uh, 100,000 base pair DNA, and there are 10 different genes, okay? You run that script, and that script will tell you the gene model, where the promoter is of a gene, where introns and exon junctions are, and it will decode with 99.999% uh, uh, precision the sequences of introns and exons. Did I answer your question, Zena? Yes, sir, you did, thank you. Gianna, there is a question. Uh, sir, are all introns and exons the same like length? No, they are different. Different genes will have different lengths of exons because they are unique. Each gene is unique. It depends unique. on what it's coding for? Yeah? It depends on what it's coding for? Yes. It depends what okay. the gene is coding for. Yeah, there are two other hands. Nida? Um, yes, sir. I had a question. Yeah. Like in the video lecture, you said that there was this special like transcription initiation site. And so the address for that was plus one. So I wanted to ask, if, is that different from the promoter sequence or does the promoter sequence end at the plus one position? So what plus one, thing? yeah, very good question. So plus one position is actually from where the first nucleotide of messenger RNA will be synthesized, which means this DNA, if here it was, let's say, uh, P, the messenger RNA, A will be decoded and messenger RNA synthesis will start. Clear? Um, so that's where the promoter sequence ends, right? Yeah, and promoter sequence ends. ends. From plus one, the transcription unit of gene starts. Okay, thank you. Any other question? There was another, Manahil ji. Uh, yes, uh, sir, I just had a small question that uh, exons and introns, right? Can they yeah. like uh, change? So like it, uh, the same part of the DNA can code for something else as well? Oh, wonderful question. Very good question. So what you are saying that we have the same exon, intron, exon, intron, exon, intron. Uh, let me uh, go one step further and then um, and I'll answer to your question will be there. Is it okay? Yes, sir, that's okay. Thank so you. now in case of you can, in case of prokaryotes, the coding sequence does not contain any intron. They are just, you know, a complete code, a complete code, open reading frame. We'll talk about open reading frame. Open reading frame means messenger RNA has AUG and then triplet codes, each 
code on encodes amino acid and then you know there is a stop code and protein is synthesized in case of eukaryotes now from plus 1 messenger rna will be synthesized and we call all this like coding region okay now once messenger rna will be synthesized we know in the messenger rna we have in in eukaryotes we have exons introns exons introns exons uh, then let's say another intron exon and that's all now this messenger rna which will be decoded is called pre mrna and this pre mrna undergo a specialized function which is called splicing rna splicing what happens all the introns which are actually disruptive sequences which disrupt the open reading frame they will be removed through the process of splicing and the exon 1 2 3 and 4 let's say will have a mature messenger rna where we'll have e1 e2 e3 and e4 now minahil asked if from same dna we can have different products was that the question minahil yes and yes we call that alternate splicing alternate splicing will be e1 e2 and then e3 is missing and e4 is there that will be from same messenger rna pre messenger rna you have a different message and a different protein will be made you may have e1 exon 1 exon 3 exon 4 or maybe e1 and e4 only but normally this alternate splicing takes place in few messenger rnas not every gene goes through this step did i answer your question manahil yes sir thank you okay now there was another i think hamza was asking question ji hamza सर मुझे पूछना था व्हाट ये तो बेटा आप पे डिपेंड करता है ना का होता है जी हमजा जी सर आई वाज आस्किंग के व्हाट इज इट अबाउट एन इंट्रॉन दैट इट मेक्स इट नेसेसरी फॉर इट टू बी रिमूव्ड एंड व्हाट इज इट अबाउट एन एक्स्ट्रॉन जो हम उसे प्रिजर्व करते हैं उनके कंटेंट्स क्या है या वी वी लेट मी कीप गोइंग एंड देन वी आर गोइंग टू सी व्हाट इज देयर सो फर्स्ट थिंग यू शुड नो दैट इन यूकैरियोट्स एंड प्रोकैरियोट्स genes have promoters the coding region of prokaryotes is a complete open reading frame in eukaryotes we have exon introns and then in both the cases we have a dna sequence which we call terminator termination sequence when so rna polymerase when it it binds whether it is in eukaryote or prokaryote once it's confident that i have recognized the promoter now it starts sliding through the coding region but then there has to be an end for this uh, this code which is enough and which is decoded into messenger rna for a specific protein when rna polymerase hits across comes across this particular sequence which we call termination sequence rna polymerase falls off and then you know transcription stops messenger rna complete mrna is made now what is important during this whole process that we understand the steps in the process of transcription transcription is what decoding dna into rna molecule there are three main steps number one is initiation and transcription initiation initiate txn means transcription transcription initiation means when the rna polymerase recognize the promoter like a saddle it sets on the promoter it has not start synthesizing rna it is just it has just recognized the promoter and it's ready for transcription then the second step is transcription elongation transcription elongation means when rna polymerase traverses through the dna 
and start synthesizing RNA molecule. And finally, you have transcription termination. Transcription termination, which means process of transcription comes to an end and RNA polymerase falls off. This is for transcription, the process of transcription. Now, what decides where termination is going to take place? Just like per motor, there are very specific nucleotide sequences, uh, AT-rich, TA-rich sequences, uh, <clears throat> which is recognized by uh, another protein they call release factor, or there are proteins which recognize this when process of transcription is coming, they act like a block, transcription block, a big block, RNA polymerase comes, hits across this, it realizes, okay, this is a signal for termination, no more. So I have completed the synthesis of messenger RNA. Now the question Hamza was asking, what is special in introns? What will happen if we don't remove intron? Was this the question, Hamza? Yes, sir. Yeah. So in order to understand this, we have to understand what is, so we have gone through the process of transcription. Okay. What do we have in our hand? We have a decoded message, which we call mRNA, messenger RNA. We call this messenger because it's messenger between DNA and protein. This, this is a intermediate molecule in, in the uh, process of transcript, uh, process of uh, flow of information from DNA to protein. Now, let's say this is again prokaryotic RNA and we have eukaryotic mRNA which has exons and introns. Hamza asked, what's special in these introns? Why they need to be removed? And what can be consequence if I removed this one, this one, and I forgot or by mistake, some error, I could not remove this one. To understand that now the genetic code going from DNA to protein, we have to understand what is an open reading frame. What is special in this mRNA? It's also made up of nucleotides. Instead of thiamine, there is uridine, but rest is all same. What I have written, I have written a, a code. There may be some nucleotides here as well. You start scanning this and you try to see, do I find some message which can be decoded into amino acids? So RNA from messenger RNA, we have to go. So here the world of nucleotides ends. And if this is going to be decoded, we are going to enter into world of amino acids. Amino acids are the fundamental building blocks of proteins. Now our last 40 years of you know, dealing with genomes and proteomes have taught us the real hidden genetic code inside DNA and that code is what we learned that I try to write these four nucleotides. Let's say we have U, A, G, C. On this side, we again have U, A, G, C, U, A, G, C. Now, yeah. Is thiamine the uh, is thiamine the complementary of cytosine or uh, adenine? 
यू टेल मी फॉर यूरेशन या नहीं कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री क्या होता है थायमिन नॉर्मली किसे बाइंड करता है डीएनए में एडेनिन एडेनिन को बाइंड करता है ठीक है तो योर सेल इज योर डीएनए इज एक्चुअली सिमिलर टू थायमिन सो एडेनिन विल बाइंड हियर ओके इन आरएनए मगर जैसे आरएनए ट्रांसक्रिप्शन हो गया था तो वो रिप्लेस नहीं कर देता यूरेसिल को थायमिन से या तो शुडन इट बी कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री ऑफ यूरेसिल फिर I did not get your question. So this is I have written here the uh, RNA sequence. So there, here is a mistake. This T should be I'm U. Sorry for the interruption, but I think he meant to say that uh, uh, complementary. I think he meant to say the alternative. I guess. Yeah. So <clears throat> actually, so this is RNA. In DNA, its complementary will be A. When it's decoded. If RNA polymerase is decoding in front of A in the RNA, it will add uridine. It will be alternate of T replacement of T in RNA. Is it clear now? Um, sir, can I ask a question? No. Let me first talk to the. Uh, you know, I have a problem. Unless my student does not yeah. get satisfied, I don't move on. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah, yeah. Uh, good. जी yes, अब आप बोले आपने बताया था की वो जो कोड होता है तो एक इन आई थिंक लाइक जो डिप्स आपने यहाँ पे बनाया जो लाइक अगर कोड हो जाए तो प्रॉब्लम Or like in the mRNA, you made this square box and then the dips, right? Dips? Which dips? Um. So like, if the the messenger RNA, which you have written X X, the cover, that was the area. Uh, I was talking about that. So you explained in that video that okay, like this should not be coded. Yeah, ribosomes were not going to be there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm coming to that point. So this was the question. I think uh, Hamza or someone asked why introns are to be removed, and I'm I'm going there. I'm taking you all there. Okay. So we have to see the code. What is the code? So we know the code is a triplet code. A U G always encodes methionine. Okay. And similarly, you have U U U. U U A. You keep going like this, and what we have learned in last forty years that total sixty-four combinations we have of these triplets. Out of these sixty-four, three codons U A A, U A G, or U G A. These three are called stop codons. they don't encode any amino acid rest of the 61 they are ones who encode 20 amino acids all the 20 amino acids they are encoded by 61 codons it means there will be many codons for sim for single amino acid there are few exceptions like tryptophan which is represented by w that is encoded by a single codon and same is the case for methionine m that's also encoded by just one amino uh, by one codon all the others amino acids they have more than one codon okay now i don't recall by heart but what is important to learn is the degeneracy degeneracy in the code means if i have u a c u a g uh, no this is wrong because u a g will be stock code if i have let's say another g a c g a g g a t and g a a 
all of them may encode same amino acids and amino acid X, okay? It becomes irrelevant whether what is on the third nucleotide. The first two nucleotides, they are important, okay? So, oh, I made a mistake, not G, A, A, all. I made a mistake here, I apologize. So let's say we have G, U, C, G, A, C, G, G, A. So the first two nucleotides, what I want to highlight is, first two nucleotides are important, even if the third nucleotide is different, U is different, the first two, still encode same amino acid, which is X, a proline or, or glutamine, whatever. Now, the point is, this highlights degeneracy. The code of DNA is degenerate. More than one codon can encode same amino acid. Why we are learning this? This is very important to learn. Now, here when I wrote this, AUG encodes methionine. CAG encodes glutamine. So we keep going like this. CG, uh, CGA encodes, let's say, X, a new amino acid. In triplet code, we keep going. This encodes A amino acids. Then uh, this one encodes B amino acids. And then we come across this stop codon and protein synthesis stops. If we go here, in a eukaryote, so we have, you know, these amino acids. We start here, AUG. You must be wondering why AUG comes always. In eukaryotes, the first codon, first amino acid in a protein is always a methionine, M. In bacteria, there, there are few exceptions other than methionine, two other amino acids can also be there. But, what is important to learn now, you go with a, uh, with the triplet code, like let's say each vertical line I'm drawing is a triplet code. We keep going like this. And what happens when we arrive here as a triplet code, all of a sudden it turns out to be a UGA, but protein synthesis, the message is not complete yet. But if after splicing, we see exon one, exon two, exon three, exon four. Now I draw vertical lines representing each codon. Now you go, we'll have methionine. You keep going, we have glutamine, we have alanine, we have proline. You will each codon will encode an amino acid. So now combining all four codon, uh, all four exons together have resulted in a complete open reading frame. Open reading frame means starting from AUG and the stop codon UAA only comes as the last amino, last codon here. Now you understand why we need to remove introns because they disrupt the, if we don't remove them, because they don't encode, they don't have the real protein coding, amino acid coding code in them, though they have the nucleotide sequence, the same ATCG, but they disrupt the open reading frame. And you don't have a complete open reading frame for protein. Yeah, there were questions. Um, uh, I think Irtaza has a hand raised for quite some time. Ji, it was a? Ji, sir, ek mera vaisi is wal tha ki, well, amino acid ki coding ki liye ye triplet code hota hai na? Yeah, yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, is there a reason why ye asal mein triplet code hota hai as in zyada nucleotide basis ki coding se vaisi nahi ban sakte thai? What do you mean? I mean, as in more than more than three amino uh, nucleotide bases, as in GUC, 
जी फिर से आ जाए उससे अमानो एसिड कोई सीक्वेंस नहीं हो जाता या फिर उससे म्यूटेशन हो जाती है सो ऑल द मैथमेटिशियंस दे हैव डन अ लॉट ऑफ वर्क ऑन दिस द पीपल हु स्टडी इवोल्यूशन एज़ वेल एंड आई थिंक देयर इज अ कंसेंसस इन इन बायोलॉजिस्ट मैथमेटिशियन एंड इवोल्यूशनरी बायोलॉजिस्ट लुकिंग फ्रॉम डिफरेंट एंगल्स दैट एज मैथमेटिशियन how many possibilities you have you have just four nucleotides and you have to arrange them u a like i wrote here g a c g a g g a t g a a and that's all you have to now change order g c a g c t g c so you can have maximum 64 combinations doing this okay if you say i i'm going to use four as the coded message or i'm going to use you know two nucleotide as a codon you are getting my point mm -hmm. ji ji so, so basically because um uh char hamare nucleotide bases hote hain uski wajah se bas ye mathematical consequence hai ki triplet code hota hai so triplet code is is the evolutionary best code here and uh, you are having uh, 64 combinations usi mein se teen stock codons bhi hain okay aur baki 61 jo hain wo 20 amino acids ko encode kar rahe hain ye aisi precise engineering hai you call this intelligent design i call this divine design i आई से इससे ज्यादा प्रिसीजन इंजीनियरिंग हो ही नहीं सकती थी यू आस्क अ वेरी वैलिड क्वेश्चन कि हम तीन क्यों कंसिडर कर रहे हैं चार क्यों नहीं करते भाई जिसने बनाया है हमने तो डी कोड किया हमने कोई नई चीज नहीं बनाई बायोलॉजिस्ट ने या मैथमेटिशियंस ने या किसी भी सब्जेक्ट ने हम उसी को रीडिस्कवर कर रहे हैं कि यार ये प्रोटीन में ये चार न्यूक्लियोटाइड ये कोड कैसे है एंड वी लर्न कि जो कोड हिडन कोड है that is actually based on triplet code mm. and all 20 amino acids they are being encoded by these 61 codons and what is more interesting ke in 61 mein bhi phir degeneracy hai ke pehle do nucleotide bahut important hai agar isme aapne change kar di kahin koi u ki jagah let's say c le aaye amino acid change ho jayega third one is अनइम्पॉर्टेंट पहले दो अगर चेंज नहीं हुए थर्ड वन को आप चेंज भी कर दें वो स्टिल सेम ही माइंड वेसेट करता है इट इज सो प्रिसाइज इट्स माइंड ब्लोइंग कि आप इससे ज्यादा देखो ना यू आर क्रिएटिंग फ्रॉम बैक्टीरिया टू ह्यूम यू आर गोइंग थ्रू एवोल्यूशन एंड जिसने ये बनाया है वो इतना प्रिसाइज है कि बैक्टीरिया में भी वही माइंड वेसेट बन रहा है A U G will encode methionine, or humans may be methionine. नहीं बनेगा, mouse में भी methionine बनेगा, plants में भी methionine बनेगा. तो जिसका code है, वो conserved है. Clear? Okay, that makes that makes sense. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, now let's say. Sir. I, I hope along the way I have answered the question. Two students asked why intron should be removed. So is it clear now why they need to be removed? Sir, I had a question about. जी जोना. um so I, i was just wondering um sorry for bringing it back to introns but i don't I, i don't understand the evolutionary benefit of having introns because you if you didn't have them you would remove an entire intermediary step you could just quickly get on to the you know the mature phase and just quickly code and you even mentioned the alternative splicing but even in that case you mentioned that specific genes require that so not not every single gene so in what way is why do we have introns from an evolutionary standpoint beautiful question uh you promise you stay with me another one hour and i'll i i will try to answer but i don't claim that i will give you an answer because mm -hmm. people wonder about this but what mm -hmm. you should know what you should know let me tell you now the reason what as biologists i believe in case of bacteria it's a unicellular organism okay it's unicellular there's no complexity 
compare this with multicellular organism. <clears throat> multicellular means not yeast. Yeast is unicellular. Let's say our cells, humans. You have neurons, you have muscle cells, you have eye cells, you have lungs, you have uh, kidney. So more than 200, more than 200 different cell types we have. And bacteria has 4,200 total genes. We have 20,000 genes nearly in our genome. Each cell contains 20,000 genes. And we have to create this complexity, multicellularity. Now, having introns, you can shuffle introns like in the alternate splicing. In our brain, I remember reading once a paper in 2003, there was a, in Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences, there was a paper which showed that human brain contains a gene whose alternate splicing gives us 38 or 36,000. I may be wrong, but more than 30,000 isoforms of a protein. Same protein, but different variants because through alternate splicing. Now, what the heck that protein is doing? How that complexity you can generate if you don't have introns? And that protein is so important. If you lack that, you die. So that is one little answer. So in order to generate multicellularity, uh, you know, our knowledge is limited at the moment. We don't know, uh, let's say, and it's documented in fruit fly, in Drosophila. We have exon one, exon two, exon three of a gene. At early embryonic development, we have a messenger RNA of same gene, which is only exon two and exon three. No alternate splicing. At late developmental stage, we have complete E1, E2, E3 decoded into protein. So the complexity multicellular organisms have we believe introns are helping to generate that diversity of cell types in our body. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, but but this is a, a, a big question. Uh, in this century, it remained a big question in the last century for, for, for evolutionary biologists as well, why we have introns, why we cannot get rid of. But then molecular biologists brought many answers which make a strong case for uh, keeping introns. Okay, now what we have to do, uh, is it clear so far? Yes or no? Um, yes, 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 sir. Okay, now yes, let's sir. move, let's move to the next step. We have now, so we, what we have learned, we have learned the transcription initiation, elongation, termination, the whole process of transcription done by RNA polymerase. I refer you, to the lecture video, which I have. I'm trying to, you know, uh, review what we have gone through in the lecture, but take as much questions as possible. Now, we also covered the introns are removed through RNA splicing and why introns are to be removed, uh, because we need to have the uh, this open reading frame intact. Yeah, now let's move to from mRNA to protein. We said we have and triplet code, okay? A mature messenger, whether it is eukaryote or prokaryote, we have a complete open reading frame. Now, in case of eukaryotes, we know there is nucleus, and cytoplasm, so the mature messenger RNA is exported into cytoplasm. And protein synthesis takes place in case of eukaryotes in cytoplasm. In case of uh, prokaryotes, there's no uh, nuclear 
uh, membrane or a nuclear structure, what happens? The process of transcription and translation, they go hand in hand. As the, uh, this is the DNA. So as the messenger RNA is coming out in bacteria, the ribosome machinery, which performs the translation uh, of messenger RNA, it catches up and then it, we call this core transcription translation right there. Now, the protein machinery which decodes messenger RNA into protein is called ribosome. There the are many subunits, many proteins which uh, make ribosome. And as soon as messenger RNA comes into the cytoplasm in eukaryotes, uh, you know, the small subunit of ribosome attaches to the messenger RNA, the small subunit of ribosome. It binds to specific sequence in the mRNA, which we call five prime UTR. Remember, uh, sir, RNA no. also go from five prime to three prime. Yeah, there's, yeah. No, sorry to interrupt, sir. It's last five minutes. We need to uh, carry out the quiz. Let's don't take quiz today. Let's finish the lecture because this is important. We'll have quiz okay. next time, okay? okay? So the small subunit recognize specific nucleotide sequence in the mRNA, which do not encode any amino acid. It is ribosome binding site, we call this, within the mRNA. It's part of exons. It's part of exons. It does not encode an amino acid, but it's part of exons in the uh, genes. Now, the small subunit moves, it slides, and it recognizes the AUG and it, it adds methionine. Okay. It adds methionine, and this is the translation initiation, and this is the time when the large subunit of ribosome also comes and binds. Now, you must be wondering how small subunit or large subunit knows I have to add a methionine in front of AUG, how it reads. So there is an intermediate molecule, which we call tRNA. This is RNA molecule, which is a clover, she clover leaf shape structure. And this non-coding RNA is very important. It has, because RNA is always nucleotides, it has nucleotide sequence, which serves as anti-codon, anti-codon. It comes in and it comes, each anti-codon has a corresponding amino acid attached here. For example, what will be anti-codon for AUG? It will be complementary sequence. You will have C, uh, A, and U, UAC. UAC and UAC anticodon will carry methionine always. Okay. Or if you have CAG codon, its anticodon is uh, CUG. Okay. And it will always carry, its tRNA will always carry glutamine amino acid. So tRNA comes, recognize with the help of this complementarity of anticodon, and then it says, okay, this anticodon here, there should be methionine. Small subunit adds methionine, and then large subunit of ribosome also comes in. They move to the next step, and the next tRNA comes in. They, are, they say there are four regions, so uh, they are written like tape. So this is the position in large subunit where tRNA will land. As the ribosome keep moving, tRNA keeps coming in. And here, tRNA actually recognize the anti-code. With the help of its anti-codon, it recognizes or reads the codon. And this is where the peptide bond at this position when the tRNA arrives, 
it forms so here already methionine is there let's say we have glutamine there here the amino and the carb so carboxyl terminal terminus of c terminus of this amino acid will be bound through peptide bond with the glutamine and we will have you know amino acids as the ribosome keeps moving we will have peptide bonds and new amino acids let's say tryptophan glycine alanine uh, tyrosine these are just symbols of amino acids you should know these symbols go and memorize this is the only thing i ask my students to memorize there are 20 amino acids 20 symbols as soon as the ribosome comes across uaa this is the stop codon and what happens the complete amino acid chain is stopped serine threonine and then glutamine and finally stop codon this is your protein now polypeptide why this is a complete open reading frame is it clear so far sir just a small yes, question sir. yeah yes sir. uh sir what do you mean by it carries a protein with it like what does that mean it carries a protein means what like trna uh, trna recognizes the codon and then has an anti codon for it and then like where does the protein come from does it like Make so or like how is it converted so what happens if, if you have seen the video there is an enzyme which is called trna synthesis okay what it does it charges trnas trna is what charges trna molecules trna is just an rna molecule non coding it does not encode any protein by itself it's just a non coding rna which is you know having tertiary structure there are hydrogen bonds because rna can fold back like this now uh, enzyme which is called trna synthase it with the help of atp energy it brings in an amino acids let's say methionine it goes through with the help of atp it goes through uh, trna charging cycle and this methionine then brings this so the right trna which encodes and which carry anti codon anti codon is just like a triplet code rna is what different nucleotides each line here is a nucleotide which i am drawing okay and then at this position the three nucleotides which we call anti codon which are complementary to this methionine bring so this trna will get this uh, trna which will carry sequence three nucleotides which are anti codon for aug and this methionine will be attached amino acid will be attached to this trna this trna will be released then now what we have we have this trna which carries amino acid methionine attached to this and anti codon when the translation will start this trna will come here and try to read where is the aug codon it will it will based on complementarity of this uac uac sequence the anti codon and then ribosome will have methionine there did i answer your question so sir like trna uh, the enzyme it like how does it know which protein to carry or like bring like does the trna first attach itself then it brings in the protein or is it the other way around no no trna is come fully charged trna oh, for okay. methionine trna for alanine trna for glycine trna for you know they, they are charged already clear okay okay yes thank you any other question Zoya has sir? a question and pass it then. G yeah. Zoya. Sir, I want to ask you on a larger scale: at what specific live events translation and transcription are occurring there, like during the development phases or all over the life? Every millisecond of our life, as I am speaking, yeah. from the time of our first day, first second of our birth, when sperm fertilizes egg. the translation kicks off and as a zygote develops 
DNA starts getting decoded and then protein synthesis starts in every cell. As I'm speaking, if there is no transcription and translation, there's no metabolism, there's no digestion, there's no, I cannot watch, I cannot see anyone. All this is due to continuously proteins being synthesized. Clear? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, so one last thing I wanted you to, none of you asked this question and that was a very important question. Yeah, there were two participants. Basit, your question was, sorry, son. Yes, sir. Sir, I have two questions. First of all, it was that these drop card holes can be one side of the other. The other question was that the tRNA is recognized as a protein. So, who does the synthesis of the protein? Ribosome. No, no, tRNA protein is not recognized as a protein. tRNA amino acids are taking it. What is protein? What is protein? Methionine, glutamine, different amino acids, alanine, tyrosine, serine, threonine, etc. So, when it decodes, the messenger RNA, we have to decode the amino acids in the nucleotide sequence. So, the intermediate between codon and amino acid is tRNA. So, the tRNA is the amino acids here. The protein synthesis is ribosomes. आपने मेरा ख्याल है लेक्चर नहीं देखा मेरा ख्याल है राइबोसोम्स करते हैं राइबोसोम इज द मशीनरी व्हिच डीकोड्स मैसेंजर आरएनए टू प्रोटीन क्लियर इसे इसे लेक्चर देखा तो लेकिन थोड़ा कंफ्यूज हो गया था कोई मसला नहीं यू कैन आस्क मी एनी टाइम अ क्वेश्चन जी कासिम अच्छा सर आपने जो वीडियो लेक्चर था उसमें बताया था कि जो न्यूक्लियोसोमल पैकेजिंग होती है उसकी डीएनए और क्रोमोसोम्स की तो वो जो है वो आरएनए पॉलीमरेज जो है उसको उसकी मूवमेंट को हिंडर करती है तो लेकिन आपने ये बताया नहीं कि उस हिंडरेंस को कैसे कंट्रोल किया जाता है वेरी गुड सो अच्छा एक और क्वेश्चन था एक और कासे में यू कैन आल्सो आस क्वेश्चन फिर मैं दोनों की आंसर देता हूँ कासे में या आप ही दो अकाउंट से लॉगिन हुए हैं ओके सो क्वेश्चन इज के जीन सीक्वेंस इन यू कैरियोट्स हैव दिस न्यूक्लियोसोम्स तो आया ये हिंड्रेंस है यस दे आर हिंड्रेंस सो व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन आरएनए पॉलीमरेज ट्रेवर्सेस थ्रू द जीन सीक्वेंस अहेड ऑफ आरएनए पॉलीमरेज ये न्यूक्लियोसोम्स इवेक्ट होते हैं एंड एस सोन एस आरएनए पॉलीमरेज पासेस बिहा� did I answer your question, Kasim? Okay, okay, okay. The question I was saying, no one asked me, which is a very important question. It is that when there is a transcription, when there is a transcription, then I will ask you a question. Which strand is going to be transcribed or decoded? Three friends. Where the this one depends on the template on the transcription which one it depends on the direction of the molecule that is moving can be chosen as the template which one it depends on the direction of the molecule that is moving which one it depends on the direction of the molecule that is moving which one it depends on the direction of the molecule RNA polymerase polymerizes from 5 prime to 3 prime. So, it will be strand. It depends on... RNA polymerase, that's a good answer. KG, it will be this. Why not this? Why not this? Why not this? Why not this? It depends on if it's from left side or right side. Because DNA goes from 3 prime to 5 prime. Yeah. Who was this one who said depends upon where the promoter is? Sir, it was me. Oh, 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 o
this one will be decoded because mrna synthesis is 5 to 3 and if we have a promoter here then which one sir upper wali strand hogi this one and now a question if i have a gene i have a promoter here and i have a promoter here as well I have a messenger RNA going like this, five to three, and I have another messenger RNA, five to three. Do I have the same messenger RNA, same protein, or different? Completely different, right? Different, different, okay, because we complement the sequence. Completely different because open reading frame may amino acids totally different. Hai. Now you should know the strand which is transcribed. Like if our gene is in this direction, transcription starts right, and then messenger, and this is a so the this strand is one hundred percent identical to this one. Is it true? No. Is it true or no? No, not identical. It would be anti okay. uh, opposite um, particles attached. Now, like for example, up for G, or that, so niche. No, 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 no. If we transcribed this strand, we said our gene is in this direction. Promoter is here, and you no, told no, me sure. that this strand will be transcribed. Hmm. So if I say this messenger RNA, which is decoded from this one, this is one hundred percent identical to this strand. Is it true or wrong? No, sir, because one is thymine and one is uracil. No, no. Chalo, that is okay. Na, that that is forgotten. Uracil, etc. That is okay. 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 अपर वन में आई एम सेइंग आइडेंटिकल टू द अपर वन या इट विल आइडेंटिकल होगा अगर थायमिन एंड यूरेसिल का यस यस इट विल बी या एंड व्हाट डू वी कॉल दिस स्ट्रैंड द सेंस स्ट्रैंड वेरी गुड दिस इज सेंस एंड द वन व्हिच वाज डीकोडेड इज द एंटी सेंस सो आई थिंक आवर टाइम इज अप बिफोर आई गो आई वुड लाइक ईच वन ऑफ यू टू केयरफुली लुक एट in the lecture let me go to the next slide the last few slides the post translational modifications what is the role of post translational modifications because once protein is synthesized our job is not done proteins get modified after their synthesis and then they go to nuclear cell uh, cell membrane or you know mitochondria etc so carefully watch this one and the second thing you should watch and pay attention to is changes or alterations in dna which in the last slide i talked as mutations and in the context of triplet code you should understand what is missense mutation i have explained there what is uh, nonsense oh, mutation and what is silent mutation please watch this yourself again and again the concept should be crystal clear to you if you don't understand feel free to ask me to any of your ta any time any question still there um sir एक क्वेश्चन पूछना था जी प्लीज जो आपने जो लेक्चर स्लाइड्स में जो अमाइनो एसिड के सीक्वेंसेस दिखाए थे जो न्यूक्लियोटाइड सीक्वेंसेस हैं डू वी डोंट नीड टू मेमोराइज देम और एनीथिंग ना नो 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 याद करने वाली चीज है नो 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 यू शुड जस्ट नो एट लीस्ट ए यू जीज मिथायोनीन एंड स्टॉप कोड ऑन तीन वो देख लो व्हाट यू शुड मेमोराइज द ओनली थिंग और या प्लीज गो अहेड एक सेकंड मेरा जरा 
نہیں میں پوچھا تھا کہ بس ٹرمینیشن سیکوینس ایک یاد کر لیں اور ایک وہ پروموٹر سیکوینس یاد کر لیں اور ایک وہ میتھالمین والی جو سیکوینس ہے یہ تین بس یاد کر لیں یا پھر نہیں ایسی نہیں کوئی میں میں اپ کو کہہ رہا ہوں اپ نے اپ کو صرف اے یو جی کا پتہ ہونا چاہیے کہ یار فرسٹ میتھا فرسٹ امینو ایسڈ یہ تو ایک کریٹیکل انفارمیشن ہے نا اوکے اوکے اٹ از جسٹ لائک اے کوڈ اور دوسرا جو یو اے اے یو اے جی یو جی جو سٹاپ کوڈونز ہیں وہ بھی اپ کو تین تو پتہ ہونے چاہیے تین ہی ہوتے ہیں Uh, tryptophan as part uh, uh, d is d dekho mujhe bhi bhul gaya d is aspartic acid and e is glutamic acid abdullah am i right are you there so 20 minus yes, acid aspartic acid is d and glutamic acid is e okay thanks god um, nahi bhula <laughs> so you should know these 20 symbols taaki aap kahin pe bhi protein sequence dekho تو آپ فوراً سے آپ کو پتا چل جائے گا یار یہ پروٹین سیکوینس ہے مجھے ڈوج کر رہے ہیں یہ ڈی این اے سیکوینس نہیں ہے صرف یہ بیس میں کہتا ہوں اینڈ دس از ویری امپورٹنٹ دیر وی ادر کوشچنز ایز ویل جی زینب ام سر آئی جسٹ ہیو ا جنرل کوشچن کہ جو ہے اپارٹ فرام دس ٹائم ڈو یو ہیو ایکسٹرا آفیسرز یو کین ا مائی آفیسرز یو ار اسکنگ یس سر یا یو کین رائٹ می ان ای میل ا because this week i have like uh, dev bio is going on this is going on then i have this uh, recordings of uh, uh, you know other lectures going on so just write me an email and we can fix or ask abdullah if i if, if you don't get an email response from my side uh, ask abdullah to you know mere kaan pakad ke aur mujhe kahe ke flan student ne mail likhi hui hai theek hai usually i am quite fast so we can set a uh, if you are on campus then you can uh, see me in office or we can set a zoom uh, meeting as well okay sir thank you ji amna uh, sir my question tha uh, you know frame shift mutation kya ye in teeno subheadings ke andar aa sakti hai is frame shift mutation hum log bilkul alag soch فار دوز ہو مے بی کنفیوز کہ ایک دم یہ کیا ہو گیا ہے ہمیں تو یہ پتہ ہی نہیں ہے سو یو ہیو اے یو جی سی اے جی یہ نارمل ایک ٹرپلیٹ کوڈ چل رہا ہے اور تو تھرو میوٹیشن تھرو سم ایکسیڈنٹ یو ہیو ایدر این ایڈیشن آف لیٹ سے اے آ گیا یا ڈیلیشن ہو گئی ہے آف سی تو اب کیا ہوا ہے لیٹس فرسٹ لک ایٹ ایڈیشن تو فریم چینج ہو گیا نا اے یو جی تو ہے لیکن اگلا کوڈ کون اگلا ٹرپلیٹ کوڈ کون سا ہو گیا اے سی اے اوریجنل کیا تھا سی اے جی اب اس کے بعد اگلا کوڈ آن کیا ہو گیا نیکسٹ کے دو یہ تو وہ سارا فریم کیا ہوا شفٹ ہو گیا ہم اسے کہتے ہیں فریم شفٹ تو دیٹ از بیسیکلی ڈیو ٹو ایڈیشن اور ڈیلیشن اسی طرح اگر اے یو جی فرسٹ ہی ہے بٹ سی اڑ گیا ہے تو فریم پورے کا پورا چینج ہو گیا لائک دس تو اس سے کیا ہوتا ہے پری میچور اسٹاپ کوڈ آن آ جائے گا یا پروٹین ٹوٹلی ایک ڈفرنٹ پروٹین بن جائے گی کوئی کینسر کوزنگ یا ٹیومر سپریسر پروٹین ہے وہ اب چینج ہو گئی ہے اینڈ دا کانسیکوینس ول بی ڈیلیٹیریس سو فریم شفٹ میوٹیشن ول ناٹ بی ان مس سینس نان سینس اور سائلنٹ فریم شفٹ از اے ٹوٹلی ڈفرنٹ کائنڈ اف میوٹیشن بٹ دیٹ کین ہیپن ڈیو ٹو پوائنٹ میوٹیشن ایز دا انسرشن اور ڈیلیشن تھینک یو سر اینی ادر کوسچن بیٹا جی If there are no more questions, then I wish you all a wonderful evening and uh, good luck for your exam tomorrow. Uh, and I'll upload lecture for next 
um, topic. Those lectures are pre-recorded, uh, pre-recorded, and they are very detailed. I did them in summer with some students, so you may see some faces of students there. But you have to pay attention to the slides and the description there. So please, my request to all of you is tomorrow your exam will be done. So please watch those lectures uh, ahead of our regular weekly scheduled lecture so that you learn maximum out of it. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good weekend as well as a nice evening.